Hello one and all, thank you for joining me for some more automotive shenanigans. Today we got something very fun in store. We're gonna be doing the timing belt on this 2004 Nissan Xterra. This is the one with the VG33E engine. But this video should help you with whatever car you have that happens to have a VG33E. And it might even be good for some helpful pointers if you have anything in the VG family of engines. Now the first step you want to do before you crack into one of these bad boys at all is do a little bit of research. And if you're watching this video, then there you go, there's step one. Uh, I'd recommend going through a manual too because if you're on a video listening to some redneck like me, they might not, they might not be doing things 100% right, they might be missing stuff. And you know, the manual, especially for these Nissans, tends to not be very detailed. It'll say something like, pick out the radiator, you know, and that might be more involved than you realize. Well, if you're ready for all that, let's get into this. Like I said, step one here is taking out the radiator. I just drained it of the fluids, unplugged the battery, took out skid plates and stuff like that, just some simple stuff. And um, if you need a video that needs to go into that level of detail, then I would recommend taking your vehicle to a mechanic for a timing belt job. It's very involved. This particular car is what's known as an interference engine. So if you do this wrong, you will break your engine. Just so you know, if you do this wrong, you will break your engine. So knowing all that, let's dive right into it. So we're taking this bad boy apart in beautiful New York. And I already know that means a couple of things. It means that a lot of these bolts are gonna be rusty and terrible. And that the bottom radiator mount is already completely rusted out. So that'll lift right out. Might not go back, but it will lift right out. So if you get yourself some pliers and a 10 mil, you should be able to lift this radiator out. Let's start with these brackets. Oh yeah, they salt the roads here, can you tell? This tube just goes into the air box, right down there. Okay, now we're gonna pull some hose. Something I've never done in my entire life. There we go. And a clip. And a clip. Tuck that over there. Next, we're gonna take this fan out. It's four bolts right here. These are 10 mils. Now that that's done, we're gonna get our trusty 10 millimeter. Pull off this shroud. It's got the two 10s on the top. And then it's like a uh, sort of push tab on the bottom, so it should come right off. Now we're gonna wiggle this shroud off. Pull this fan out. And the whole thing should come right out. Okay, at this point, if you have an automatic, you're probably gonna have two extra hoses for your transmission cooler. But this thing is a manual, so no transmission cooler. We'll just heave ho and away we go. What did I say about those bottom radiator mounts? There they are. <sighs> Look at all that room for activities. Well, at this point, we've made it to the second stage, I would say, of the timing belt, and that is all the accessory things. So we got three belts, because Nissan apparently couldn't figure out how to make the serpentine belt do everything. So we got a belt for the AC, belt for the power steering, and a belt for the alternator. Now, if you're gonna reuse these, you should mark them. I'm not, these are all old and sacked out, but just in case. So here we got, a C. Here we got P S. And over here it's just A L T. Why not? I love the way Nissan does this, or at least their tensioners, which every manufacturer did them like this. So we're going to identify which one of these is the furthest out. It's the AC. So these are all 14s. Stick one right here. Put 
loosen that up. We're going to go over here and loosen this up. Oh, you know you want to come off. There we go. One third of the way in. And the next one we're going to do is the power steering. All right, after loosening that, out comes this belt. Now we're two thirds of the way to being done. Now we get down to the alternator. This is all 12s. So, undo this one first. We got one more on the top here, that's right. Okay, this really didn't want to loosen any more than that, so I just unscrewed it all together. Now I should just be able to swivel it around. And there we go. Last belt. Now we're not quite out of the woods yet with the belt assembly. We still got to take apart all the brackets and stuff like that to actually get us to the timing belt. So we got another 12. This one right here. This is a 10 millimeter. I hate these clips. These weird Nissan clips. Oh, look, this, it's, it's happening. It's happening. It's folding over. The stupid thing. Well, that's just perfect. Okay, yank that out. Next, we're pulling out um, brackets. We're going to start with this outermost one. It is held on by three 12s. One is here. And one is right here. There's one bracket. Okay, now we got this bracket, which is held on by two 12s. Third one is right there. All right, come on. Well, at this point, it would probably be time to start taking off brackets, moving some stuff around so we can get to these covers. But the big thing I'm worried about, especially because I said things are going to be stuck and rusty here, is this. This crank bolt, it really scares me. So we're going to try to get that off now. Otherwise, you know, got to call the whole thing quits. I got this loose with a giant breaker bar, putting the car in fifth and grabbing it with this, uh, Serpentine belt. I'm going to grab a puller because I don't anticipate that coming off easy. All right, so I got this line back up before I take it off. There we go. Because it doesn't quite line up with the keyway. Top dead center. Can you see the mistake I made here? Ripped out some big chunks of the balancer what happened was the bolt when i was tightening in the puller i tightened it all the way back so it didn't have any space to actually back up and then when i heard the big ping which usually means it came off i actually just ripped off all these tabs so don't make this mistake if you're doing this now we got to pull all these cables out because we got to get to some bolts back here so, we'll start with, one thing I like about these Nissan harnesses is they make it very hard for you to plug stuff into the wrong place. So, if you know what you're doing, you can just pull stuff out pretty willy-nilly. Okay, we got everything unplugged, so let's just stick that up under the cruise control and out of the way. All right, next up, we gotta take this breather line off because it's hiding back there. So we'll get on it. Okay, first thing we got two tens right here. I'll tell you what, nothing is more New York than listening to the Bills game against my will. That's what you'll hear coming over from the neighbors. Got 
that one, and there's one hiding back there. All right, now we got to take off the actual hose part. So that's right here. There's one. This one went over there to the air box. There you go, that's out of the way. After all of that junk, we can finally get to the point where we're taking like the timing belt and timing belt cover off. So here we go. These are all little eights. You want to come off, huh, little eight? There's just a few of these all around. Pop them off and you should be able to get the top cover off. few more bolts and you got the lower one off Pop. well much to my surprise it looks like this timing belt might have been done before this uh, I don't know it's not as crusty as I expected it to be and it looks like it was done wrong so what you're supposed to do with these timing belts I marked them with gold this lines up with a little tab in the back there this one right here lines up with a mark down here and this one is supposed to line up right there but as you can see it looks like we're a tooth off so that might explain why it doesn't run super great that'd be nice you know fix that and the misfire goes away but i'm not holding out hope for that but we got to get this old belt off first and foremost first thing we got to do is pull off this tensioner this is a 14 and it's really on there All right, I feel like it should relieve tension now. Hmm. So this is how on there it is now. Notice it seemed very sloppy. This didn't seem to have relieved tension when I opened it. Click. Well, it must have had some tension on it. Let's save this washer. Now after all that, there's our old belt. Probably could go with a front crankshaft seal, which I don't have. But you know, you win some and you lose some. If you're sharp, you might have realized that that was a massive pain in the ass. And so while we're here, while we're here, we're gonna do a little bit more. We're gonna change the water pump. That's right, uh, even though we did all this, we still haven't gotten to the point where you yank the water pump out. So we're just gonna take that little extra step and do it now so we don't have to do this again. One thing I do notice, this pump is different. This wants um, stuff to thread into it. And this one has little studs. So I think before I go any further, I'm gonna go find some bolts that'll fit into that. So we're not left high and dry putting it back together. So we got a few bolts holding this water pump on still. They're all 12s. We'll start with this funky one closest to the cylinder bank over here. Don't let me forget, this is where it goes. Oh, just leak all over the alternator, why don't you? Crap. So I prepped this surface. You're gonna want it to be as clean as possible. I wasn't able to get all the old gasket out. Some of it was like petrified on there. So this isn't ideal. I put a little bit of a gasket maker on either side. So I'm hoping that'll make up the difference. So let's, uh, let's get this thing on here right. Got a torque wrench and the good book says to do 18 to 21 newton meters in 16 to 21 newton meters 
that's not really it's really not a lot in one quarter increments okay we're gonna do it in a star pattern too well there we go we that we got that all torqued down I don't think I'm gonna seal this thing up completely because I'm not hundred percent sure it's gonna seal and I'd rather just take off the timing belt rather than do this all again so we'll do the timing belt today and then probably test to see if it's leak tight and then put the rest on tomorrow all right here's our old tensioner and here's the new one might as well use it if you notice this one's got the this one's got the spring so we'll take it off of there let's see if we get it all aligned there we go take the spring off move it on over all right here's our timing belt it's got a direction pointing forward the USA all right this has got two lines I would think they would line up here but they don't so my next guess is this one lines up on here That one lines up on there. So I was right about this. This one goes here. That line seems to go there. Let's see if the line on the bottom matches up. <laughs> yep, there it is. I can see the line right there. So the diagram shows this Allen key hole poking down like that. All right, now it says to go for a test. We're going to spin around until these lines line up again. And be very careful, don't force this at all. Like I said in the start, interference engine. Actually, I'm already worried by that. <laughs> all right, so confirming that the car is not in gear, we're gonna go around two times. What the manual says to do is it should deflect about 0.5 to 0.59 inches if you lift up on it with 22 pounds. And we don't have the special tool, but I do have this luggage wear and a ruler. So let's, let's get this up to 22 pounds. 22, and we deflected. Almost half an inch, like the grease, you can see where the grease line is on there. Yeah, well, Try it one more time because I might I feel like I have it too tight and I think this will confirm it. Hmm. 20.6. Zero me out, yeah. Uh, you're like half an inch now. Half an inch. Mm -hmm. Well, that looks about right. Since it said 0.51. So before I was worried about this not lining up with the, uh, the mark over here, but it lines up on the timing belt mark and I ran it around its full length and it seems to be okay. So I guess if you see that, it might not be as big a deal as you think. So there we go, we're all, we've got this thing all together. We got our water pump in, we got our timing belt in. I rolled it around quite a few times. We checked the deflection in a really uh, piss poor kind of way, but we did it. So there we go, that's a massive pain in the neck, but here we go, it's all done. And um, I'm gonna let the water pump settle out for a bit, but if you're doing this for yourself, that should be everything you need to know. That's all the hard stuff. And once you get to this point, you just put it back together the exact opposite way. Well, I hope this was informative. Best of luck to you. Anyhow, take it easy. Shoots.